So my name's Anton Andriarchio. I'm uh, here from a development company called Double Bishop. Now we're based out of Australia. Our whole approach is to look at new modes of development, essentially trying to understand how we can use natural language processing techniques and artificial intelligence, not to solve the challenges of development, but to provide insights, help provide some ideas. Uh, and I'll start by saying that, well, artificial intelligence is going to transform the world. And uh, I don't think that's a necessarily controversial statement to an audience like this. Um, I mean, hell, even the, uh, con even the contrarians we talk to, they are they're more concerned about when and how it's going to happen rather than if it's going to happen. Um, but when we talk to filmmakers about the use of artificial intelligence, we usually hear things along the lines of, yeah, I've heard it all before, or um, uh, yeah, it doesn't include the human element, or more commonly, uh, computers can't write scripts, it's a human task. Well, we're not trying to write scripts. What we're trying to do is, is build on a film industry trope almost, that good ideas can come from anywhere. They can come from an intern, they can come from a mother-in-law, they can come from a janitor. Um, our, the question we're trying to ask is, if good ideas can come from anywhere, when do we start listening to AI for those ideas? So I don't have long today, but I'm here to talk about a case study that we've been, uh, uh, of a project that we've been working on. It's a young adult novel franchise. It's a series of novels. Um, and it's very, a very popular series. I haven't included the name, but if you are motivated enough, I'm sure you could figure it out. Um, we're here to help them convert it from a book series into a series of feature films. Now, this is a, a challenge that Hollywood's grappled with before, successfully a lot of the time, and unsuccessfully sometimes as well. Um, but essentially, what we would, our role was to try to provide a different perspective and help complement the creative team. So it was low expectations at the start, but we, uh, we had to earn our stripes to really provide impact in that space as well. So it was a fun challenge um, with a very complex stakeholder environment we had. Uh, a lot of very exper experienced film people on it that obviously held the floor a lot of the time. We had an incredibly acclaimed writer who was obviously knew the series better than anyone. And we also had an incredibly motivated and supportive f body of fans. So the, f the fans are very engaged in this work. And um, it's not just that we wanted to, we didn't just want to not offend them. We actually wanted to celebrate why they connected with these works. We really wanted to get to the heart of, of why they enjoyed these works and understand that. So to step back, our goal as we defined it was we wanted to truly understand the source material. And that's, it, it seems like a self-evident evident thing that we might try to do. But um, when you think about it, if 10 people read the same book, they're going to imagine completely different worlds. And similarly, if you get 10 writers to write the first draft of the script, you're going to get 10 very different drafts. So we, we tried to go all the way back, and our role wasn't just to experiment and read the digital tea leaves, it was to look at the challenges that had been identified by the producers and the feedback that had been given, and we were to use that as a constraint and problems to solve effectively. And so some of those problems were, we didn't just want to map what happens in the novels, but we wanted to understand why it works. Um, the storytelling method of the books is very unique. It's, it's one of the one of the things that makes this story really interesting and the property really cool. So we wanted to really get to the heart of it, not just the superficial level, but try to understand the geometry of the storytelling, essentially. And we also wanted to appreciate the sophisticated metaphysical framework. So see how we can um, try to get beyond the, the plot into why people are really responding to this on a, on a metaphysical level and explore the psychological underpinnings of the, of the principal characters because whilst they were being mapped across in the original scripts, they weren't really maintaining the the integrity of the characters from the books quite enough. So we would really, really want to understand that. But the challenge we had is, how do we do this objectively? So the solution we found was natural language processing. Now, by definition, natural language processing is trying to extract meaning from text, which is exactly what we're looking for. We want meaning from text. And it's to explain a little bit about the field, it's the overlap of artificial intelligence, computational linguistics, which is computers looking at, looking at language, and then computational science as well, computer science. So we've got a lot of programs who helped us with this um, to go right down to first principles and build tools around the, the challenges we had rather than trying to find tools that were a solution looking for a problem. So the industry's been around for a while. I'm sure many of you are familiar with it, but since the 50s it was used to convert Russian scientific papers over into English. Um, so, uh, but more, more recently there's been a reorientation to statistical natural language processing, which is why it's somewhat relevant to this conference. So there were four topics, or sorry, four sections that we looked at. The first, top, the first was around topic analysis, using something called a latent Dirichlet allocation. And this allows us to expose and reveal hidden underlying topic structures, which 
gave us a lot of insights into things we hadn't seen before. Not just, I mean, because when we read, we read very linearly, we interpret things very linearly, but there are all these different linkages between ideas that aren't necessarily exposed when we read it from a human perspective. And the second analysis was a, a character analysis, so looking at something called a linguistic inquiry and word count, essentially using the words, the dialogue that actors use, sorry, the, the characters used, to try to reveal personality traits and get insights into their, into their um, you know, feelings, motivations, thoughts, hopes and dreams. We also looked at uh, some complexity analysis, so we used some fractal, fractal dimension analysis to look at the, to assess the uh, complexity of emotional intensity and exposition density and how we were transferring information. So looking at essentially if it's, if we weren't, if the complexity was too low, the story would be inherently boring because we're not communicating enough. If it's too complex, we may become overwhelmed. So we tried to use this not so much to solve the problem, but to, to use it as an indicator to visualize how we're, how we're transferring information on all these different levels. And the last one uh, on the metaphysical analysis, this wasn't really natural language processing, but I put it up there just to, just to show that we weren't just trying to use a couple of tools. We were trying to look at all sorts of perspectives and find the right tools that were available. So I don't have long, so I'm going to go through two of these. The first one is a uh, topic analysis on latent, we're using a latent Dirichlet allocation. So a young physicist brought this to us. Essentially, a latent Dirichlet allocation uses, uh, it, it uses this thing called the collapsed Gibbs sampling to reveal hidden topic structures. So it, it treats each, each word as a data point, a data point that has intrinsic information, and then it uses this, this method, this algorithm, to sort it out into topics. So for instance, if we had two topics, cat, and dog, the word kitten would fall into the cat column, the word puppy would fall into the dog column, the word cat food would fall into the cat column, dog food into the dog column. But the arrangement of these words would be based on probabilistic association with the topic. So if you can look on the right, each of these columns is actually a different topic that got shaken out. And this wasn't the first result, this was after a lot of, a lot of hard work by Henry and his team. Um, we get all these different topics with different words and their associations. Now we looked at this and again we were like, well, what does this mean? But when we started to look at it in comparison to the scripts, we started to distill that this, this was actually pretty insightful. It gave us an insight into you know, some of the key characters, a lot of how the motifs are organized in terms of priority and importance. It didn't include timing, but when we then mapped it over the, over the course of the story, this actually provided further insights as well. And from here, this is where we really started to gain momentum with using some of these tools. So we got objective insights into the topic structure, but we're also able to analyze the scripts objectively against the underlying novel, because they're ultimately different works, they're for different audiences, but if we're trying to maintain the topic structure, we can start to look at why it's not really working in terms of it being an embodiment of the, of the underlying story. Now, it also helped us reveal a couple of key connections that helped resolve some creative blocks with the team. Um, again, we weren't just coming in and saying, hey, we've solved it, it's, here are some ideas. When we look at it from these perspectives, what does it say? And what it enabled us to do is provide some pretty cool recommendations that have since been implemented on the script, which gives us the validation that we're on the right path. So that's the first topic. The second one was the, the personality assessment. So the, well, how we use these tools to help us understand characters better. And we use this thing called a linguistic inquiry and word count model. Now we didn't invent this, we're standing on the shoulders of some incredible research that's been done with this. But ultimately the words that we use have, have tremendous psychological value. It gives us insight. And you know, in telling stories we really only have two tools, it's either dialogue or it's action. And by using this tool it allowed us to assess the dialogue to infer psychological profiles. Now what you can see on the right here is actually well, the application of this based on one page of dialogue, it's the epigraph at the start of the novel where one of the main characters, who's the lead voice for this, talks about the history, his history, the background, the world, and just based on this, we were able to run this assessment to get an understanding of his entire character. And over on the right, you can see that, well, you can't really see because it's very small, but it looks at conscientiousness and self-assuredness and discipline and all sorts of these parameters. And that allowed us to infer that his, his character is type A, he's extremely hardworking, he's unhappy and he's disagreeable. And suddenly we had this objective profile as to what our character actually looked like. So we use this in a couple of ways. Um, first of all, it was to try to understand the foundational level, but then we started applying it to different parts of the script, or different parts of the novel, and then different parts of the, different, of, of the scripts, the script versions that have been done, to try to understand the character arc. And that, that to us is, is pretty pr a pretty profound shift because we hear a lot about character arcs but we don't necessarily hear objective criteria and quantification about what's actually happening on a character arc perspective. So 
Um, that we also had a lot of success with that. Um, the nice thing though is we've got a lot of work to go on the in the development process, and it's a very rich ground for testing these. But ultimately, if they're not going to be applied, then uh, there's no point. So we're really happy that a lot of these notes that we've come up with and, and ideas have been embraced, and we've got great buy-in from the stakeholder team. So I know I've only got the 15 minutes talk, so I'm going to call it there. We're pretty proud of it. It's a successful implementation of a couple of these building blocks. Um, and to go back to our original statement, if good ideas can come from anywhere, well, maybe it's time we started listening to AI. Um, that's all from me.